So here's a question that researchers may have actually cracked, we could say. Can peanut allergies be overcome? A new study published today in the journal Lancet found that toddlers given increasing amounts of peanut protein powder were able to build up their tolerance to peanuts. So to discuss this, we are joined by Dr. James Baker, the founding director of the Mary H. Weiser Food Allergy Center and professor at Michigan Medicine. Doctor, thanks so much. Thank you, Phil. Right off the bat, what can we learn from this study? And does it actually mean that some peanut allergies can be avoided? I think the good news from this study is that young children actually have a better response to therapy with peanut than older children. So the success is better and the likelihood that they're going to have long-term ability to deal with peanut allergy is much higher. So parents are gonna be asking this next question. If a toddler has this allergy, can it be dangerous to give him or her this peanut protein? So what, what would the risks be of trying this technique? Well, I think the good news is that when we did these studies in older children, older than age four, there was some risk and they did have reactions, some of them severe, but it was good enough that it got full approval as a therapy for peanut allergy from the FDA. Now what we're seeing in these younger children is the fact that they do better, they have fewer reactions and all the reactions seem to be easily treated. So in fact, younger children do better in terms of having adverse reactions to the therapy and having good outcomes. More kids seem to have peanut allergies these days than in the past. First of all, is that, is that just a perception or is it true? And if it is true, why is that? Well, that's the big question. Why do we see this sort of epidemic of food allergy? And it is certainly true that there's more food allergy out there. It's just not just better reporting, but what we're finding out is that the human immune system has sort of fundamentally changed in young people. Uh, you know, quite honestly, they don't deal with infections as, as commonly. They don't have bacterial problems. They're treated with antibiotics. So in fact, their immune systems are actually evolving differently. So many more of them have allergic disease because they don't seem to be challenged with other things. So. It's truly a fundamental change in the human immune system in our lifetimes. Yeah, and evolving more recently too, that kind of brings me to my, my, my last question for you. During this pandemic, everybody, but kids specifically, have been, you know, been masking up and social distancing, and so they've presumably been, ex presumably been exposed to fewer germs. What impact might that be having on their immune systems and response to allergens, if any? Well, obviously, we don't know the long-term impact yet. But since we think one of the problems that predisposes young people to allergy is a lack of infection and a lack of exposure to bacteria and bacterial components, it may be that these young people are more likely to have allergies long term as a result of this sort of uh, period where they've been sort of kept in the cocoon. Now, that doesn't mean we should have let them go. Obviously, COVID is a serious disease. But we need to understand better how to manage the immune system and how to make sure that we balance immune responses to protect against both allergic disease and infections. Big study, a lot more to come. Dr. James Baker, thanks so much for taking the time and for your clarity on this. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.